Hi, Woodmore Elementary Artists. Um, this book has a lot more words and less pictures, but it's still a really good one. It's about Grandma Moses, who is a painter. So I'm going to read it to you um, this way instead of being in front of you. And I love this little quote at the beginning. It says, if I didn't start painting, I would have raised chickens. Grandma Moses. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is written and illustrated by Alexandria Walner. So, so she wrote the story and designed the images inside. So she illustrated it. I mean, she drew all the pictures. Anna Mary Robertson was born on September 7th, 1860 on a farm in Washington County, New York. She had a happy childhood. During lazy summer days, she floated along the mill pond, looking at puffy white clouds on a raft her brothers had built. She ran through fields dotted with sweet-scented wildflowers. Her favorite game, however, was building air castles, as she called making believe. Anna Mary had few toys, so she made her own. Once, she cut out paper dolls from newspapers. She painted eyes with blue laundry rinse and lips with grape juice. Her mother's old petticoats made nice trimmings for the dolls' dresses. Anna Mary was proud of her first artwork. One winter, her pa got sick. He could not work outdoors. So he asked Ma if he could paint pictures on the living room walls. Ma said she didn't care as long as she got clean walls. For hours, Anna Mary watched Pa paint a scene of nearby Lake George. When he was done, Ma was so pleased that she asked Pa to paint the whole room full of outdoor scenes. Or landscapes as we like to call them that's a cool picture making pictures look like fun to Anna Mary so she painted scenes of hills lakes fields and trees on pieces of slate and window panes she called them her very pretty lambscapes which made her brother laugh lamb like the animal Pa liked Anna Mary's paintings but Ma needed her to help with farm work. In winter, Anna Mary carried buckets of maple sap for making syrup. She helped Ma mold candles and soap. She did housework and helped neighbors too. There was little time for school, three months in summer and three in winter. Certainly, there was no time at all for painting pictures. When Anna Mary was 12, she left home to work as a hired girl. She worked hard for a nearby family, cooking three meals a day, tending a large garden, washing, ironing, and churning butter. After a few years, she worked for another family who let her go to school when chores were done. In school, she sometimes was allowed to draw. She enjoyed making maps. Her teacher asked if she could have one because he liked the way she drew mountains. She was so pleased that someone liked her artwork. In autumn 1886, when Anna Mary was a young woman, she went to work for another family. There she met Thomas Solomon Moses, a hired man. Anna Mary got to know and respect Thomas. Later, she wrote, in those days, we didn't look for a man with money, but for a good family, good reputation. Many of the boys were chicken thieves. Anna Mary and Thomas loved each other, and a year later they got married. Then they moved to Staunton, Virginia, in the Shenandoah Valley to manage a dairy farm. They bought two cows on credit. While churning milk into butter, Anna Mary sat on the porch and watched the landscape. The setting sun changed green hills to blue. A train's gray smoke curled into the pink sky. How she wished she had time to paint that scene. Instead, she turned a lot of milk into butter, and proudly paid for the cows. Soon, Anna Mary had a baby, and the family moved to Mount Airy Farm. She had nine more babies, but not all lived. Five little graves I left in that beautiful Shenandoah Valley, she sadly wrote. The family eventually moved back to New York. They bought a dairy farm near Eagle Bridge, which they called Mount Nebo. Anna Mary spent her days cooking, washing, ironing, mending, gardening, feeding chickens, and raising children. One day, she was wallpapering a parlor and ran out of paper. 
Still yearning to make pictures, she saw a chance. She painted two large trees on either side of the fireboard, and in the middle, she painted a lake with big bushes. Her family admired the scene. That was my first large picture, she later wrote. Very creative. Run out of wallpaper, just paint the walls. I love it. Always get permission first, though, guys. <clears throat> Let's make sure all the pictures in here. Her children grew up and left home, but still Anna Mary was busy helping Thomas run the farm. They found time for fun, though, going to church, on picnics, or on buggy rides. She watched people skating on ponds in winter and children flying kites in the spring. Anna Mary treasured those wonderful memories. Perhaps someday she would have time to make them into pictures. In the very cold January of 1927, Thomas got sick and died suddenly. With her children gone and her husband deceased, Anna Mary was lonely for the first time in her life. But now she had time for her artwork. When she turned to it, she found it comforting. Finally, she could show people that many happy memories she had gathered over a lifetime, and they could see the world through her eyes. She made many worsted pictures with brightly colored yarns. When her fingers developed rheumatism, which is kind of a type of arthritis, and she could no longer hold a needle, she turned to painting. Anna Mary often felt Thomas was watching over her shoulder and whispering to her what to paint. She wrote, I never know what I'm going to paint until I start in. Something tells me what to go, what to go right on and do. For the next 10 years, Anna Mary painted many scenes, always something pleasing and cheerful. I like bright colors and activity, she wrote. Anna Mary used cheap paint and brushes. She used toothpicks for fine details and glitter on snow scenes to make them sparkle. How many of you like to add glitter? I know I do. You guys know I do too. In 1938, after painting a lot of pictures, she decided to exhibit some of them in the Hoosick Falls drugstore. I also exhibited a few at Cambridge Fair with some canned fruits and raspberry jam, she wrote. I won a prize for my fruit and jam, but no pictures. She was disappointed, but didn't let it stop her. She was having too much fun. I feel that way sometimes, like maybe people won't appreciate my art, but at least I have fun making it. One day, an art collector from New York, Louise Calder, passed through the Hoosick Falls and saw Anna Mary's pictures. He liked her scenes of farm life and, and of days gone by. He said the cozy pictures made him feel happy, and he thought other people would feel the same way. Lewis Calder took the pictures to New York. He said an art gallery there might want to show them. Months went by, but none of the galleries were interested. Although the art dealers liked the pictures, they didn't want to take a chance on an unknown artist who was close to 80 years old. When the Museum of Modern Art had an exhibit of unknown American painters, three of her paintings were shown. Then in 1940, the gallery St. Etienne would, or said it would display her pictures. Look, everybody's checking them out. They're excited, I think. Oh, there's more people checking them out on the other page. People liked the honest way Anna, Anna Mary painted memories from her heart. They smiled at scenes of long ago days, quilting bees, playing in the snow, families getting together on holidays. Through her pictures, they felt as if they knew her. She was like their own grandmother. Soon, Anna Mary came to be known as Grandma Moses. When my exhibition opened, large numbers of elderly people came, having heard my story, she wrote. Old people said they were inspired by her example. They admired her for starting a new career at her age. Her pictures were reproduced on greeting cards, and soon many people knew Grandma's artwork. In 1949, President Harry Truman presented her with the Women's National Press Club Award for outstanding accomplishment in art. She was interviewed on radio and TV, asked about how she painted. Grandma answered, before I started painting, I get a frame. 
Then I saw my masonite board to fit the frame. I always thought it a good idea to build the sty before getting the pig. She also modestly wrote, I am doing better work than at first, but it is owing to better brushes and paint. People paid her a lot of money for her artwork, but that didn't matter to her. Grandma was now a famous artist. She remembered a dream her father had about when she was a little girl. He dreamed I was in a large hall and there were many people there. They were clapping their hands and shouting. He wondered what it was all about, she wrote. She was glad that she finally had a chance to make her pictures and that people enjoyed the pretty world she created. Grandma Moses died on December 13th, 1961 at the age of 101. She had once said, life is what we make it. Always has been, always will be. The end. So guys, I, I really love that story of Grandma Moses. And I what I like about it is that even though um, she knew people weren't like super excited about her artwork at first, she still kept making it. And she also makes another mention of how she gets better. So if you guys um, have an opportunity, maybe you could um, draw something that's just for you, something that someone didn't tell you to draw, something that, or you make something that's just for you. No one told you to do it. It just kind of like happens. So if you guys think of something like that, or if you just want to share something you have made in the past that you weren't super sure that anyone would like, but you made it anyway because it was just for you, um, you can you can email that to me. So I'm so glad you guys were able to listen to this story and I miss all of you. I will talk to you guys soon through emails and um, I've been doing some Google Meets with elementary students too. So if you ever wanna do a Google Meet and show me what you've been up to, you can certainly do that. All right, guys, have a great night. Thanks.